Now, any alternating current has something called the resonant frequency. This is the equation for the resonant frequency. The significance of the resonant frequency is that when the frequency is at the resonant frequency, the reactances of the capacitor and the inductor will be equal. We won't work that out mathematically, but we can prove that when omega is equal to 1 over root LC, these two reactances will be equal. It'll just be a little bit of algebra to show that. The reactants for the capacitor and then... And for the inductor would be equal to each other. Actually, it's very easy to prove. You can just re if you set these two things equal to each other, you can see the only way the two reactances can be equal is if omega is equal to this root of uh, 1 over LC. So this is the resonant frequency at which the two reactances are equal. R is the resistance of the resistor. Xc is kind of like the resistance of the capacitor. Xl is kind of like the resistance of the inductor. How can we find kind of the total resistance of the whole circuit? Well, that's what's called the impedance. The impedance is kind of like the total resistance of the whole circuit. And the symbol for that is capital Z. Capital Z is the total impedance of the entire circuit. And here's the formula for it. The impedance is the root of R squared plus the difference between the two reactances squared. And then we can treat this again kind of like the overall equivalent resistance of the whole circuit and plug it into Ohm's law. By the way, suppose that we're at the resonant frequency. If we were at the resonant frequency, what would the impedance be? If we're at the resonant frequency, what, what happens at the resonant frequency? What, what's this the, one the two resonant are equal to another? When the two reactances are yeah. equal. Well, when those reactances are equal, what's going to happen to this formula? Zero. This term will cancel out. And then what will Z be? R. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the significances of the resonant frequency. When you're at the resonant frequency, it's pretty much as if the inductor and the capacitor weren't there at all. If you're at the resonant frequency, it's like the inductor and the capacitor and the capacitor cancel each other out, and the total resistance is just what the resistance of the resistor would be. This is a kind of way. So kind of, in a sense, they're canceling each other out at that point. Let's try this problem. This is a pretty standard. <laughs> So let's try putting this information into our picture. We have uh, 60 hertz. I'll kind of put that over here. Because that's really coming from the power source. Now, remember that that's telling us the frequency. But what's going to be useful to us is omega, the angular frequency. I don't know if you remember how to find omega, what the equation is that relates to omega and f. Right. And it's hard to remember where does the 2 pi f go. Oh, but you already remember. It was 2 pi f. That's right. So it's not 2 pi omega. It's 2 pi f. So right off the bat, we might as well figure out what omega is going to be. I guess we can just say it would be 120 pi. <coughs> Should we actually do that calculation? Okay. So 120 pi would be 377 radians per second. And that should be put here because this is coming from the power source. What other numbers do we have? It's an inductor with an inductance of 1.53 times 10 to the negative 3 henrys. So we have to put an inductor in our picture.
1.53 times 10 to the negative 3 degrees. Good. Then we have to do the same thing with the capacitance. You've already done that. 1.67 times 10 to the negative 2 farads. What was the resistance? 329 ohms. 329 ohms? Uh, 0.329. These are not very even numbers. Okay. Um, <coughs> just looking for the formula. This is just something we can use the reactants for in this Ohm's law over here. What was our definition of, of reactants, our formula for calculating the inductive reactants? Uh, we said w, um, the omega L. Yeah, and this is the way that we're going to calculate that. Because this is what we have the information for. Because after all, remember, this is supposed to be analogous to the resistance. Even though it's not the same thing, it's analogous, so it has to have the same units. By the way, this is the reason why we couldn't just stick with the 60 hertz. We had to translate this into omega. People tend to forget this. They'll usually give you frequency, but you've got to change the f frequency into the omega frequency before you can use these equations. So it's good that you remember that formula. One five nine. Mm -hmm. That should again be in ohms because this is like, excuse me, this is like a resistance. We should want it. We have to keep putting all of our information in the right place in our picture. It's very important to make a nice big picture so we can put everything in the right place. Do you have the answer for that? So we can check it. Uh, That's right. Okay. Good. 